Right, so ISO 27001 is an international standard. All standards have a year against them. Um, it's um, in the area of information security. It's about defining an information security management system, which is called I an ISMS. The standard is 24 pages. It's split into two sections. The first section is clauses. Uh, the second section is controls. Clauses are basically, this is the bit that everyone needs to do. This defines the framework that you run your ISMS in. Uh, and basically a whole bunch of stuff you've got to do. You've got to define the context that your company is working in. You've got to define which part of your company this uh, 27001 system uh, applies to and a bunch of other things. This is an example um, clause from the standard. Um, I can't show you the whole standard because it costs. There's copyright issues. So controls, there's 114 of them in 14 sections. This is an example of a section. You can see the kind of thing that's in there. Here's one um, uh, that says you've got to basically, you've got to your information assets, your username details, your SSL certificates, your encryption keys, all the things that are information assets. You've got to work out a classification scheme, which bits are public, which bits are semi-public, which bits are very confidential. Um, you then need to define some handling rules. Uh, we shouldn't put those in public directories on our website, for example. Um, and after you've defined those, you then basically go through a process of identifying your risks. Perfect setup by Ilya, thank you. Um, and in doing that, you need to think about your context, these obligations from various laws, and about all these information assets that you're trying to protect. Um, uh, you select controls from that list that we talked about, um, uh, and then having done that, you then need to think about a treatment plan for how you're going to make sure that those risks don't materialise. Um, you then need to define some measures that you're going to use to see, is your ISMS working for you? Is it actually protecting you? Uh, you from those risks and set some objectives for uh, against those measures. Uh, you're going to uh, monitor this whole process and evolve and then that's going to feed back. So this is kind of like the core of the, the, uh, the ISMS. Um, so how do you go about defining these risks? So for each risk you basically come up with a list, so a bad thing that can happen, a data breach. Um, you've got to think about the impact, you've got to think about it in three terms, confidentiality, availability and integrity. Um, and for each of those, you think, well, how, what's the impact of this risk if it happens for each of those? And you give it a score. You come up with some scale. Um, and so obviously for this one, confidentiality is bad. The other one's not so much. Uh, so overall, five is the impact for this risk. You've then got to think about what are you currently doing. Um, and uh, so you, hopefully you've got some stuff in place that you're doing to mitigate against that risk. And then you've got to think, well, what's the likelihood of that risk happening given everything we're doing now? And you give that again um, a kind of rating and then you multiply these together and you come up with a risk factor and as you can see from this example that's not good and very often when you first flush out your risks you realize you're not actually doing that good at the managing them. you then need to think about a treatment plan you look at the list of controls and say ah which of these should we be applying to try and manage this risk better um, and it, all those things what would then the likelihood be of this happening so now we think well then it would be very unlikely it would be awesome if we were doing those things and so now you've got a new risk factor. And so what you do is you apply this process over and over again through all your risks. Um, and you end up with a risk register. So a big list of these. These are the bad things that could happen to our company. Um, this is the stuff that we're doing now to manage it. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff now we've identified that we need to do to better protect our information assets. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm reading the wrong slide on my screen. So a key part of the plan is you've got to have evidence for everything you're doing. So you've got to be able to prove that you are doing these things. Um, uh, and then you've got a to-do list. And these are the things we know that we need to do. Um, uh, and the first thing you can do is prioritise it. And you can prioritise it both by which of these is going to have the biggest impact on that risk factor we saw. Because there'll be some things that have small changes, some things that will have big changes. Not putting stuff in public directories on your website, for example. Um, uh, you've, you've got to do them and you've got to track that you're doing those and make sure you've got an audit trail. This whole thing is about getting a certificate that you can put on your website um, and my company went through this recently because one of our big customers was requiring it. This is getting required more and more. Um, 
the audit process, you first have a stage one to say, is it worth even going any further? Do you know what you're doing? Ah, ah, that's more like it. Um, uh, and then if you get through that, you, you might have some stuff you need to do, um, and then you've got to have stage two. This is where they come in, and as our auditor, auditor said to me, this week, tear you a new one. Um, uh, and it, the length of that depends on the size of your company. For two of us, that was a two-day, someone in your face for two days. You then get a certificate for three years, and you do annual surveillance audits after that to maintain it for those three years. At the end of three years, you do the full process again. Our experience of this was there's lots of cowboys out there. It can feel like a Ponzi scheme. How do you do this? Ah, there's another ISO standard for that. Um, really doing this adds a lot of overhead, but doing it helps you identify lots of things. Um, we've realized oh, well, that we have lots of other information assets that kind of came out in the process and lots of other risks. So it has really helped our business, but it has also added a lot of overhead. Hopefully, as it becomes more of our DNA, this will, the amount of overhead will go down. Um, more and more of you are going to have to know about this, and more and more you are going to end up having this required. The advantage for a developer, as Il Ilya set up, is that being able to talk about the risks and that you need to do certain activities as a developer to, manage, to better manage those risks is, is a good way to, to motivate doing a better job. Um, so that's it. Wow, also within five minutes. <laughs>